Hey there, right, it's uh, Emil from Nature's Light and last time I did a video on Tony Capers TK8 plug-in panel, I, was, I received a couple of questions around why not just use the blend mode? What I was doing over there was I was taking two images and I was using the select sky feature on the TK8 panel and I was basically creating a, a, an exposure blend. Now, you can use the blend tool itself inside TK8, but I tend to prefer using the luminosity masks themselves to be able to try and create these exposure blends. And I'm going to demonstrate using quite a complex photograph that I took in Lupatana recently during a workshop for Nature's Light. Now, if we look at the images, or at the image over here, you'll see that I have got let me just find where we are quickly, you'll see that I have a lovely milk wood forest with these awesome rays of light coming through from behind and I've managed to capture quite a tonal range inside the image. Now this image here is actually blended using Tony Capers panels. However, the first step that I took was to try the Adobe ACR route. Now this is the result that I got. And although you get this kind of ethereal look towards the image, there are a couple of issues around it. For a start, we've got flat tones in the mid-tones over here against the actual logs themselves or the milkwood. And if you look into the corners, you'll also see that I've got quite bad chromatic aberration, as well as several other kind of artifacts that have resulted from using just a standard automated process. So what I'm going to do instead to get this kind of result is go back to using the TK8 panels. Now, what I've done is I've started in actually using Capture One Pro. This is a preferred um, workflow for me. I just prefer Capture One personally. And what I've done is I've taken my four images here that have been shot uh, for the highlights. So here we've got one for the deep shadows, my midtones, my brights, and for my highlights. Okay, so I'm going to take all of those images and I'm going to select them and say edit with and we're going to go into Adobe Photoshop 2022 which is the current uh, the current sort of iteration of the of it at the moment. Then we're going to set edit variants and port over to Photoshop. Once you're in Photoshop you'll find that your images have all loaded up nicely and this is where Tony Capers panel starts to get quite useful. Now if I just go to the multi-panel over here which is the TK8 panel. In the bottom left hand corner where it says TK, you will see this opens up a bunch of actions which are very useful. And the first action I'm going to hit is stack. And I don't even need to select images, it just stacks everything that's opened up inside Photoshop and it closes them after it's all been stacked into a single file. So there's my single file over here and you can see there are my different layers that have come through to the photograph. Now, I first am going to align the photograph and again once more I don't need to select any additional layers it just looks at the layer panel and it aligns it once I hit the align button here. So we'll allow that to align quickly and there might have been a smidgen of movement with the actual shot or between the shots that I was creating. You can see just along the bottom there's probably a pixel that's out. Okay now that we've aligned it I can just to demonstrate use the actual focus blend or um, the focus blend action. Now what this does is it selects all of the images, it uses the sharpness and the brightness as well of the various tones and it creates a mask to be able to create a blended photograph. However it uses not Tony Capers luminosity masks to make the blend, it uses Photoshop's find edges and find sharp detail. Very much what you would find if you just went through to the edit auto blend in uh, Photoshop itself. And the result is okay but we've kind of lost all of that really interesting textural detail in this in the uh, the actual branches themselves so I'm going to switch that off for the time being and what I'm instead going to do is I'm going to grab this top one I like renaming all of my files so I'm going to rename the top one highlights or the different layers the layer below is going to be brights and then the layer below this is going to be my midtones and the layer right below that is going to be my shadows. Okay, right, I'm going to go back up to my highlights and I'm going to create a new inverted mask. So an inverted mask means it's filled with black. So I'm going to hit my option button and I'm going to hit my create mask and I get a black mask. 
Now that basically just means that the layer is invisible. You can't see anything. I have to paint white ink onto it in order to be able to see the photograph. Now what I'm wanting to do is bring out a little bit more detail in the highlights over here from this particular photograph or from my brights layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my brights layer and I'm going to go to the multi-mask mode and I'm going to just use the standard straight brights one. Okay, and it automatically brings that up into lights one and I'm now going to create a mask or create a selection, sorry. Once the selection is in place, you'll see there's marching ants around the multi-mask box over here. Now I'm going to hit my layer again, so I'm making sure that I'm attached to that black mask and I'm going to just get a nice big brush and make sure that the ink is set to white. So I'm going to paint my white ink. Um, I have an opacity set to around 40, that's pretty good. Right, and I'm just going to paint in where I want to get my detail. And you can see I'm slowly bringing through just a little bit more detail in my highlights so that we're no longer clipping quite as badly. Okay, and it's looking pretty good. All I'm doing is just bringing through a little bit of that lightness. And we can zoom in as well just to make sure that we're not creating any artifacts or anything. And that's looking pretty good actually. There we go. Yeah, that's nice. And there we go. Looking good. We've got a little bit of a double edge over here. So what I can do is just you know, let's back that off a touch. There's enough detail there that is fine. There we go. And that's great. So now we've managed to get our lights through so that there's just more detail inside our highlights. We're still clipping exactly where the sun is, but that's fine. I don't actually mind. The point for me was to be able to get more detail through and you can't actually bring back the light from the sun. The sun is 100% bright. Okay, but we have gotten a lot more detail inside there. You can even just take a look at the histogram here when I switch it on and off. Okay. Now I'm going to grab those two layers, so hitting command and clicking the layer below, and I'm going to group them into a single layer. And then what we're going to do is the same thing as before. I'm going to create an inverted mask. Oopsie. Notice over here, because my um, mask was still in place, what had happened, or my selection was still in place, what had happened is it's created this mask here. So I'm just going to undo that over there. You can see my, my marching ants are still around the block, so I actually have to deselect that. So I'm just going to hit command D and it deselects it. Now I'm going to create my inverted layer and there we go. So we've got this again. Now what I need to do is get all of that brightness back. So what I'm going to do is hitting my mid tones over here. I'm going to go back to my multi mask mode and we're going to look for the bright tones. Um, I think we're going to use two this time around. Uh, I suspect this might be a slightly better one. We can always paint more in as we go. So I'm going to create my, mar my marching ants or my selection. And there we go. It's already all set up. You can see that we have this in place. And I'm going to go back to my mask over here. And we're going to paint in our white ink once more. Notice it's at black. You can hit X to quickly change that. And we're just going to paint that in. Nice big brush. There we go. And that's fantastic. You can actually start seeing the light coming through, that crepu those crepuscular rays, which is really, really nice. Okay. And because I'm painting this, it means that I'm essentially choosing where my tones are going to go. You can go and create a full um, layer, which automatically builds a mask throughout the entire image. But I kind of prefer doing this where... I get to choose where I want to paint my light inside. Okay, there we go. That's looking okay. If you want to see what the mask looks like, hold down Alt, click on your mask, and there you go. So there is no way I could be able to get that from just using a normal paintbrush. Okay, cool. So that's looking okay. Now we can also click on this and just see what it's doing. I actually want to bring back some of these highlights over here. So I'm just going to go back into this one. And we know that those highlights are in the layer below. Hang on, let's just see. Yeah, they're in the layer below. So we want to just paint that out black. So make sure black ink is set. And let's just get that back over here. There we go. That's looking nice.
Okay, so this is basically what I would consider my base exposure. From this, I would then think about um, doing further expo uh, adjustments with the luminosity masks themselves, or potentially even using some Nick effects. Or so my final image, I did a little bit of an Orton. Uh, blur because I wanted to bring some of that ethereal light coming through. I added a color layer which was going to be a bit of warmth into the frame as well. Uh, before I got there though, of course, we still had this last layer at the bottom. And partly I wanted to just bring through some more of the, the light that we can see coming through. So what I'm going to do in this case is let's bring our shadows up another notch. Um, I kind of like using my shadows at the bottom, but this time around I'm actually going to bring the shadows to the top, right up over here, and I'm going to do the same thing with my inverted mask. So there we go. Oops, again, same mistake as I made last time. You've got to remember to deselect. It's a very quick and easy fix though, at least. Right, now what we're wanting to do is we're wanting to get these brighter por portions lit up a little bit nicely. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to use the entire image as it stands. I'm going to go back to my multi-mask and we're looking for these tones here. So this time around, actually instead of multi-mask, let's use the, the picker, the tone picker. So I'm going to click on the picker then I'm going to come in and I'm going to find my little color over there and we're going to go OK. And you can see there it's starting to select these little areas. But what we want to do is just highlight them a little bit better. So we're going to adjust our, our mask over there and we're going to soften it a little bit. There we go. And then once more, I'm going to grab my mask over here and we're going to come back into this. And now I'm not going to use a particularly strong brush. So I'm going to just get my opacity down to about 20 and we're going to paint that in there. And there we go. Look at that you can actually start to see this lovely light coming through and you can draw along the same lines that you're using that you can see from the actual light rays themselves. And all it's doing is it's bringing in these tones from your brightest image at the bottom. And there we go. That's it. And there is how we start our image, basically. We've now got what I would consider my base image. And from there, I would continue with the rest of my editing workflow to be able to get to the final result that you see over here. Right, uh, that would be part two. So I think uh, let's keep this nice and short and sweet. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this is useful. If, it's, uh, if you'd like to hear some more about um, the TK8 panel, you can follow along, subscribe to support if possible. I will try and do a couple more. I'm still essentially just finding my way around the TK8 panel. You can also look at people like Sean Bagshaw, who are essentially um, masters when it comes around to using Tony Capers um, panels. I am still, it's one of the tools that I use I find it's very useful for commercial photography, for landscape photography. I use things like the frequency separation all the time. It is entirely possible to do it in Photoshop without the TK8 panels, but the TK8 panels just make it that much easier, which is why I firmly endorse them. Don't get anything out of it though, but I do endorse them. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Pop a like in the bottom if you'd like to um, support the site, and hopefully I'll see you again in future. Cheers.